Welcome to Jersey Reads the Classics, an audiobook podcast delving into the finest works of our literary masters. Unfortunately, it's read by this woman. What the hell? Who cares? Let's go on an adventure. Hello, and welcome back to Jersey Reads the Classics with me, your house, Rosa DeCandia. Well, my friends, today, this fairy tale is a very famous fairy tale, and a little FYI about me. I know I battled, but today I have to tell you, I did a production of this, a musical in a great community theater in New Jersey around 40 years ago. 40 years ago, I started start as the lead character in this particular fairy tale. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but anyway, that was 40 years ago. And recently, my co-star, he contacted me via Facebook Messenger 40 years later, remembered my name and found me. All right, enough of that, but let's go on down to our book, because it's not about me. Or is it about me? Is it always about me? Okay, we're we're gonna go to Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales by, who else? The Brothers Grimm. On today's episode, we will be reading Hansel and Gretel. Hello, yes, I was Gretel many, many moons ago. But enough about me, let's begin our story. Near a great forest dwelt a poor woodcutter with his wife and his two children. The boy was called Hansel and the girl Gretel. He had little to bite and to break, and when great scarcity fell on the land, he could no longer procure daily bread. Now, when he thought over this at night in his bed and tossed about in his anxiety, he groaned and said to his wife, what is to become of us? How are we to feed our poor children when we no longer have anything even for ourselves? I'll tell you what, husband, answered the woman. Early tomorrow morning, we will take the children out into the forest where it is the thickest. There, we will light a fire for them and give each of them one piece of bread. And then we will go to our work and leave them alone. They will not find the way home again and we shall be rid of them. What a bitch. Oh my gosh, she wants to dump her children. It's like what people are doing right now with their dogs. No, wife, said the man. I will not do that. How can I bear to leave my children alone in the forest? The wild animals would soon come and tear them to pieces. Oh, you fool, said she. Then we must all four die of hunger. You may as well plane the planks for our coffins. And she left him no peace until he consented. And so he gives in. What a schmuck. Another father who's got no balls to stand up to his wife. Ugh, but I feel very sorry for the poor children all the same, said the man. The two children had also not been able to sleep for hunger and had heard what their stepmother, there we go. Once again, we've painted the stepmother in a terrible position. She is a bitch, right? Because the mothers who gave birth wouldn't do that to their children. Let's not talk about that because we're seeing so many mothers and fathers doing terrible things to children, but we're not gonna get there. So of course the step monster is the bitch that wants the kids to die, okay. I'd heard what their stepmother had said to their father. Gretel wept bitter tears and said to Hansel, Now all is over for us. Hush, Gretel, said Hansel. Do not distress yourself. I will soon find a way to help us. And when the old folks had fallen asleep, he got up, put on his little coat, opened the door below, and crept outside. The moon shone brightly, and the wine pebbles which lay in front of the house glittered like real silver pennies. Hansel stooped and put as many of them in the little pocket of his coat as he could possibly get in. Then he went back and said to Gretel, Be comforted, dear little sister, and sleep in peace. God will not forsake us. And he lay down again in his bed. When day dawned, but before the sun had risen, the woman came and awoke the two children, saying, Get up, you sluggards. We are going into the forest to fetch wood. She gave each a little piece of bread and said, There is something for your dinner, but do not eat it up before then, for you will get nothing else. Gretel took the bread under her apron, as Hansel had the stones in his pocket. Then they all set out together on the way to the forest. When they had walked a short time, Hansel stood still and peeped back at the house and did so again and again. His father said, Hansel, what are you looking at there and staring behind for? Mind yourself and do not forget how to use your legs. He's yelling at the sun and he's going to be dropping them kitties off in the forest to die and be eaten by the animals. Fuck you, daddy. Okay. 
Ah, father, said Hansel, I am looking at my little white cat, which is sitting up on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. The wife said, fool, that is not your little cat. That is the morning sun, which is shining on the chimneys. It's interesting. These kids want to go back home to a father who is willing to dump them in the forest. That's all I'm saying. Hansel, however, had not been looking back at the cat, but had been constantly throwing one of the white pebble stones out of his pocket on the road. When they had reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Now, children, pile up some wood, and I will light a fire that you may not be cold. Hansel and Gretel gathered brushwood together as high as a little hill. The brushwood was lighted, and when the flames were burning very high, the woman said, Now, children, lay yourselves down by the fire and rest. We will go into the forest and cut some wood. <clears throat> when we have done, we will come back and fetch you away. Lies, 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 yeah. All a bunch of liars. I want to see what happens to that bitch at the end. Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire because they were told by the liar to sit by the fire. Oh, that was not me. Okay, look at me. I'm a poet and, and don't know it. And when noon came, each ate a little piece of bread. And as they heard the strokes of the wood axe, they believed that their father was near. It was not, however, the axe. It was a branch which he had fastened to a withered tree which the wind was blowing backwards and forwards. Oh my God, how frickin' devious. The father friggin' gave in so quickly to the wife to shut her up, to abandon these kids, friggin' abandon the children to die. Okay, let's, let's just talk about this. And now he's gotten even more shadier that he set up this branch to be going back and forth so it sounds like an ax. Terrible, terrible. I can't believe he's setting his children up to be devoured and he don't care. And he's going to sleep soundly. You watch that bitch. All right, where was I? Because I'm getting all kinds of fuckuffled, kafuffled. And as they had been sitting such a long time, their eyes shut with fatigue and they fell fast asleep. When at last they awoke, it was already dark night. Greta began to cry and said, how are we to get out of the forest now? But Hansel comforted her and said, just wait a little until the moon has risen and then we will soon find the way. And when the full moon had risen, Ansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles, which shone like newly coined silver pieces, and showed them the way. Show me the way! They walked the whole night long, and by break of day came once more to their father's house. They knocked at the door, and when the woman opened it and saw that it was Ansel and Gretel, she said, You naughty children, why have you slept so long in the forest? We thought you were never coming back at all. Look at that bitch flipping that shit around. This is what the liars do. She's yelling at them when she's like, bitches, they came back. And she doesn't want them to know, even though they know, that she wants them dead, bitch. The father, however, rejoiced, for it had cut him to the heart to leave them behind alone. Yeah, cut him so much to the heart, but he still did it. And he was still cunning about it. I'm not buying it. Not long afterwards. There was once more great scarcity in all parts, and the children heard their mother saying at night to their father, everything is eaten again. We have one half loaf left, and after that, there is no more. The children must go. We will take them farther into the wood so that they will not find their way out again, and there is no other means of saving ourselves. Again, this bitch, I'd like to know what they do for a living. I'd like to know why they're not working. I'd like to know, what are they doing all day? Where are they getting the food? Where are they getting the money? The man's heart was heavy, not heavy enough. And he thought, it would be better for you to share the last mouthful with your children. The woman, however, would listen to nothing that he had to say, but scolded and reproached him. He who says A must say B, likewise. And as he had yielded the first time, he had to do so a second time also. The children were, however still awake and had heard the conversation. When the old folks were asleep, Hansel again got up and wanted to go out and pick up pebbles as he had done before. But the woman had locked the door and Hansel could not get out. What a bitch, it's like she knew. Nevertheless, he comforted his little sister and said, Don't not, do not cry, Gretel. Go to sleep quietly. The good God will help us. Well, is he gonna come down and snatch you from that house and give you some food? I don't know. Kidding. Early in the morning came the woman and took the children out of their beds. Their bit of bread was given to them, but it was still smaller than the time before. 
On the way into the forest, Hansel fumbled his in his pocket and often stood still and threw a morsel on the ground. Hansel, why do you stop and look around, said the father. Go on. I am looking back at my little pigeon, which is sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me, answered Hansel. I love it. This kid's got an answer for everything. Simpleton, said the woman. That is not your little pigeon. That is the morning sun that is shining on the chimney. Hansel, however, little by little, threw all the crumbs on the path. Hansel was no fool. He know, bitch, that there was no pigeon. Go screw yourself, bitch. The woman led the children still deeper into the forest, where they had never in their lives been before. Then a great fire was again made, and the mother said, Just sit there, ye children, and when you are tired, you may sleep a little. We are going into the forest to cut wood, and in the evening, when we are done, we will come and fetch you away. More lies. Liar, liar, pants on fire. When it was noon, Gretel shared her piece of bread with Hansel, who had scattered his, by the way. Then they fell asleep, and evening came and went, but no one came to the poor children. They did not awake until it was dark night, and Hansel comforted his little sister and said, Just wait, Gretel, until the moon rises, and then we shall see the crumbs of bread which I have strewn about. They will show us our way home again. When the moon came, they set out, but they found no crumbs, for the many thousands of birds, of course birds, which fly about in the woods and fields had picked them all up. Hansel said to Gretel, We shall soon find the way, but they did not find it. They walked the whole night, and they all the next day too, from morning till evening. But they did not get out of the forest, and were very hungry. For they had nothing to eat but two or three berries, which grew on the ground. And as they were so weary that their legs would carry them no longer, they lay down beneath a tree and fell asleep. It was now three mornings since they had left their father's house. They began to walk again. But they always got deeper into the forest. And if help did not come soon, they'd be shit out of luck. They would die of hunger and weariness. When it was midday, they saw a beautiful snow white bird sitting on a bough, which sang so delightfully that they stood still and listened to it. Ah, oh, now the bird is going to help. And when it had finished its song, it spread its wings and flew away before them. And they followed it until they reached a little house on the roof of which it alighted. And when they came quite up to the little house, they saw that it was built of bread and covered with cakes, but that the windows were of clear sugar. We will set to work on that, said Hansel, and have a good meal. I will eat a bit of the roof, and you, Gretel, can eat some of the window. It will taste sweet. I don't wanna be licking no window, I want some bread. Hansel reached up above, broke off a little of the roof to try how it tasted, and Gretel leaned against the window and nibbled at the panes. Then a soft voice cried from the room, Nibble, nibble, gnaw, who's nibbling at my little house? The children answered, The wind, the wind, the heaven-born wind. They are some smart little motherfuckers. I mean, we're hearing this little voice, and now they know how to answer, but real quickly, you know how a bird is now taking them out of the forest to a house? It's like the bird in member in Alice in Wonderland, not one Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, how quickly I forget. The Neverbird helped Peter, and then The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. If you haven't read all these books or haven't watched my videos, too bad, go back and look at them. And then we have that other stork that helped out the scarecrow, hello. It's like these birds, birds are symbols of goodness, okay? And they're not even doves, these are just birds, okay? And went on eating without disturbing themselves. Hansel, who thought the roof tasted very nice, tore down a great piece of it, and Gretel pushed out the hole of one round window pane, sat down and enjoyed herself with it. Suddenly, the door opened, and a very, very old woman, who supported herself on crutches, came creeping out. Hansel and Gretel were so terribly frightened that they let fall what they had in their hands. The old woman, however, nodded her head and said, Oh, you dear children, who has brought you here? Do come in and stay with me. No harm shall happen to you. She took them both by the hand and led them into her little house. Then good food was set before them, milk and pancakes with sugar, apples, and nuts. Oh my God, I love pancakes. I could go for a large stack of pancakes right now with some banana and chocolate chips. Oh my God, my mouth is watering. Afterwards, 
Two pretty little beds were covered with clean white linen, and Hansel and Greta lay down in them and thought they were in heaven. The old woman had only pretended to be kind. She was in reality a wicked witch who lay in wait for children and had only built the little house of bread in order to entice them there. When a child fell into her power, she killed it, cooked and ate it, and that was a feast day with her. Oh my God, I definitely don't want to go to the Wicked Witch's house for dinner. No, I'm not bringing the wine to you. I won't be coming to your house for dinner because um, my taste that I don't like rare meats and children are rare meat. Actually, I don't eat meat, but uh, thank you, but thank you, but no thank you. I'll pass on Hansel and Gretel. Witches have red eyes and cannot see far, but they have a keen scent like the beasts and are aware when human beings draw near. When Hansel and Gretel came into her neighborhood, she laughed maliciously and said mockingly, I have them. They shall not escape me again. Early in the morning, before the children were awake, she was already up. And when she saw both of them sleeping and looking so pretty with their plump red cheeks, she muttered to herself, <laughs> That will be a dainty mouthful. How plump could they be? They've been starving for weeks. Anyway, but they're still young and innocent, so they probably look plump and healthy like cherubs. Then she sees Hansel with her shriveled hand, carried him into a little stable and shut him in with a grated door. He might scream as he liked. That was of no use. Then she went to Gretel, shook her till she awoke and cried. Get up, you lazy thing. Fetch some water and cook something good for your brother. He is in the stable outside and is to be made fat. When he is fat, I will eat him. Gretel began to weep bitterly, but it was all in vain. She was forced to do what the Wicked Witch ordered her. Again, another one's doing the housework. And now, the best food was cooked for poor Hansel. But Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Well, at least you know you're not going to be eaten soon, Gretel. Every morning, the woman crept to the little stable and cried, Hansel, stretch out your finger that I may feel if you will soon be fat. Hansel, however, stretched out a little bone to her. And the old woman, who had dim eyes, could not see it and thought it was Hansel's finger and was astonished that there was no way of fattening him. Oh, Hansel is smart. This kid is a genius, is all I'm going to say. When four weeks had gone by. Oh, good. I love when they tell us when the time, you know, when they used to say time has passed. Time has passed. It's passed. Four weeks had gone by, one friggin' month. And Hansel still stayed thin. She was seized with impatience and would not wait any longer. Now, Gretel, she cried to the girl, be active and bring me some water. Let Hansel be fat or lean. Tomorrow I will kill him and cook him. Ah, oh, how the poor little sister did lament when she had to fetch the water and how her tears did flow down over her cheeks. Dear God, do help us, she cried. If the wild beasts in the forest had devoured us, at least we should have died together. Just keep your nose to yourself, said the old woman. All that won't help you at all. Okay. Early in the morning. Gretel had to go out and hang up the cauldron with the water and light the fire. Isn't that terrible? She's preparing the scene for her brother's demise. We will bake first, said the old woman. I have already heated the oven and kneaded the dough. What does she need dough for? Oh, she likes bread with her meat? I guess so. She's going to make a sandwich, a Hansel sandwich. She pushed poor Gretel out to the oven from which flames of fire were already darting. Creep in, said the witch, and see if it is properly heated so that we can shut the bread in. And once Gretel was inside, she intended to shut the oven and let her bake in it. And then she would eat her too. But how, but how thick could Gretel be? You've been starving the poor child. She's been eating crab shells. What are you going to pick your teeth with her bones? So she's cooking bread, going to have a nice rump roast of Hansel, even though she thinks he's thin. I guess she figures two thin ones are like one equivalent of one fat kid. But she's got to have, I guess she's going to dip her bread in the gravy. Is the gravy their blood? Boy, I might get in macabre over here. But I mean, this story is pretty macabre. Let's be honest. Okay. But Gretel saw what she had in her mind and said, I do not know how I am to do it. How do you get in? Silly goose, said the old woman. The door is big enough. Just look. I can get in myself. And she crept up and thrust her head into the oven. Then Gretel yeah, 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 gave her a push that drove her far into it and shut the iron door and fastened the bolt. Go, Gretel. Go, Gretel. Cook the witch. Cook the witch. Cook the bitch. Cook the witch. Oh, then she began to howl quite horribly, but Gretel ran away, and the godless witch was miserably burnt to death. Love it. 
love it with someone's cooking the witch we're gonna have cooked witch we're gonna have cooked witch why not but who cares goodbye be gone witch Gretel, however, ran like lightning to Hansel, opened his little stable and cried, Hansel, we are saved. The old witch is dead. Then Hansel sprang out like a bird from its cage when the door was opened for it. Mm -hmm. How they did rejoice and embrace each other and dance about and kiss each other. And as they had no longer any need to fear, they went into the witch's house. And, and in every corner there stood chests full of pearls and jewels. I would have been eaten, but that's okay. These are far better than pebbles, said Hansel, and thrust into his pockets whatever could be got in. And Gretel said, I too will take something home with me. They want to go back home to their devious parents, live in the friggin' gingerbread house, eat the food, you have all this money, screw that bitch of a step monster, and screw your dad who wanted you out the river too. All right, whatever. I'm getting very fired up over here. Let me go back a little bit. Okay. And Gretel said, I too will take something home with me, and filled her pinafore full. But now we will go away, said Hansel, that we may get out of this witch's forest. When they had walked for two hours, they came to a great body of water. We cannot get over, said Hansel. I see no foot plank and no bridge and no boat crosses either, answered Gretel. But a white duck is swimming there. If I ask her, she will help us over. Ah, oh, see, and now it's another bird, a duck. Then she cried, little duck, little duck, do you see? Hansel and Gretel are waiting for you. There's never a plank or a bridge in sight. Take us across on your back so white. Ah, the duck came to them and Hansel seated himself on its back and told his sister to sit by him. Now, replied Gretel, that will be too heavy for the little duck. She shall take us across one after the other. Gretel's gotten real smart too since she kicked that witch's ass. Gretel's like, bitch, now, nah, Hansel, let's not sink that duck. We're going to be fucked if we sink that duck. You know what I mean? Fuck a duck. Okay. The good little duck did so. And when they were safely across and had walked for a short time, the forest seemed to be more and more familiar to them. And at length, they saw from afar their father's house. Then they began to run, rushed into the parlor, and threw themselves into their father's arms. The man had not known one happy hour since he had left the children in the forest. Good. He didn't deserve one happy hour. The woman, however, was dead. The step monster's dead. And that's all she gets. The woman, however, was dead. I love it. That the witch is dead. The bitch is dead. And now they got jewels and pearls. They're going. Who's better than them? Hansel and Gretel. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's a party. What is going on today? I'm feeling all kinds of wonkiness. Anyway, let me go on. Gretel emptied her pinafore until pearls and precious stones ran about the room, and Hansel threw one handful after another out of his pocket to add to them. Then all anxiety was at an end, and they lived together in perfect happiness. My tale is done. See the mouse run? Whoever catches it may make himself a big fur cap out of it. The end. Okay. That last line, I don't get it. I guess he's, they lived happily ever after. The tail is done. You see that mouse? If you want to kill it and make a hat out of it, go for it. Okay. What else? Oh, my God. You know, like I said, I did this musical 40 years ago. I don't remember much, but I don't think it was a stepmother. I think the parents, they think the kids went out into the forest and just got lost. And I think that was it. Um, oh, my God. This is a good Hansel and Gretel. I'm not going to lie. I'm loving it. Excuse me. I'm loving these tales. That's all I have to say. They are dark and twisted, but kind of, um, kind of true to life a little bit. All right. Whoa. So much going on. We've got betrayal. We've got, um, we've got a lot of betrayal actually, but we've got good overcoming the evil once again. And also we've got smarts. So let's try to break this down into woo-woo because there's a lot of woo-woo going on. There's a lot of woo-woo going on here. And let's think about it. Hansel and Gretel. There's stepmother, evil woman. So we now know she's dead. So the vengeance, what's, and there's also forgiveness in this. The point is that woman dies. We don't hear anything else about it because she doesn't deserve anymore. But she convinces the father a little too easily to let his children go into the forest. And unfortunately, even though Hansel, who's pretty freaking smart, you know, the plan goes awry, but they're misled and taken to the house and what have you. But are they misled? 
where there are riches and all that good stuff because they rely on their wits and they go home and they come home with papa, the mother's dead, and so happy, feel good story, but there's a lot going on in the sense of their journey. So what I do want to look at the fact is these two kids, these two youths, as the guy says, the judge, I mean, as my cousin Vinny, <laughs> Joe Pesci, these two youths, these two youths, these two youths are left in the forest. They're shit out of luck. Hansel tried to be, you know, what you call it, resourceful. First of all, I love the fact they weren't angry at the parents for wanting to ditch them. I guess they understood that we're all going to force starve, but there are parents and what have you. But we're going to go on to the fact that they're in the forest and then this bird shows up. And the bird shows up as like kind of like a guardian angel, I'm going to say, because they're led to the house. And you're going to say, well, it's not a guardian angel because they led them to like the wicked witch. Yes. However, this little guardian angel took them on another leg of their journey. If they stayed in the forest and stayed there and slept, they would have been eaten by the wolves, dogs, whatever. They have a little guardian angel, or can we say a sign, or we'll just even say an opportunity to go somewhere else and they follow it. And though they think it's a good deal, yes, they see the house made of chocolate, I mean bread and all this other shit, they get, they get hoodwinked and then whatever. But think about it in your own life. When you've been in a situation where you're down in the dumps, shit's not working out, but then a phone call. You meet a person, you meet a stranger who tells you about this op you know, this opportunity, or you meet a new person in your life to help you get over the hump of life, what have you. And you take advantage of it and say you get that new job, or say you meet that new person, start dating them, or you meet a new friend, and it's going fine for a while. But then you realize maybe it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. But but through that relationship, through that opportunity, through that, uh, you know, situation, you grew. You got smarter, just like Hansel and Gretel, right? Gretel got smart. She knew to push. By the end, she pushed the witch in the oven. And she, wouldn't, she didn't stand there. She knew to push that. She got smart. So what this is telling me, this part of the leg of the journey is, we're going to go through crappy things. We're going to meet those witches. We're going to be in the fake gingerbread house that turns out to be a house of nightmares whatever situation and we have to rely on ourselves like Hansel and Gretel but it made us they made them smarter so think about all the times I'd like to encourage you to think about all the times situations you thought have sucked but what did you learn from them what what did you learn from your last all right what did you learn from your last relationship if you're you know if you're single right now or you're another with another partner but what are your relationships? What was the greatest lesson you learned? And was that a relationship that caused you the most turmoil? But the thing is this, you learned. That's the point. Hansel and Gretel got into a dangerous situation. It was either being eaten by wolves or they learned. And they learned a hard way, but they learned and then got rewarded for learning. And you're going to say, well, what's the reward in my life? The reward for learning is if you get a new job and it doesn't work out, you've gotten new skills. And maybe that was just good for your resume. So now you go somewhere else or through that job, you met somebody else from another company and has hooked you up with a new job, an even better job with more money, with more opportunities, with more growth. Or you're in a relationship with somebody and you become friends with their friends and you develop friendships with them. And even if the relationship doesn't work out, maybe you still keep their friends. I know sometimes people choose, maybe you end up dating one of the person's friends, even if it's just an acquaintance. So, you know, the thing is, we're always going to be faced with something that's not going to be what it seems. Not always, but you know what I mean? Things are not always what they seem. So we go into things with great intentions, right? The two kids went into eating the house with great intentions. And it was like, it's the house here, it's bread, it's sugar, it's we're going to eat. And it turned out to be a nightmare, but it did it because they, they got smart, right? They got smart. They used their wits when they needed to, and then they left with riches. And then on these kids, what I think is amazing and magnificent, we've talked about this before, forgiveness. They didn't say, screw them, screw mom and dad. You know, the witch is dead. No one's going to live in that house again. They could live there forever and eat parts and pieces of the house. And obviously there was food and like, you know, whatever. And they had all this per pearls and jewels. They could be going into town, find town, find it, you know, find the town and move and not have to worry about their parents. But they loved their father. And the fact that they returned home to share the wealth and did not even say, well, we're not going back there because of our stepmother. They were going to share their wealth, and they did. And what I think about it is forgiveness. So 
we talked about forgiveness before and forgiveness is not about the other person. I just want to encourage you to think about is there anybody right now in your life that you could forgive and you don't have to call them up or text them. You don't have to write a letter to them. If you want to, that's on you. But even if it's just something you're holding on to a little bit of anger, I know sometimes, sometimes it's hard and you're just like, oh, that person's really has pissed me off. But all I'm going to say is that's just poison. We've talked about it. That doesn't serve you. So I think another lesson to learn is to get over that. These kids just loved unconditionally and most children and animals do. That's what's beautiful about children and animals. It's the adults that have the problems. But our point is to think about right now, am I holding on to anything that's no longer serving me in terms of holding on to any bitter grudges? Because I would encourage you right now, especially during this time, to release it. And how you release it, send that person or the situation light and love and be like, I love you. I release you with light and love. I wish you well. It's time to move on. I wish you well. I forgive you. I forgive you. And you know what starts happening? You do it more and more. You do a little bit every day. It doesn't have to be like you have to do it all day. You start feeling like nothing for that person. Not apathetic. You're just like, okay, I'm not angry. I'm not sad about them. I've moved on. And it's okay because you got to move on because forgiveness is not about them. It's for you. It's actually for you, for you -ness. It's for you not to have that bitterness sitting in you. So I think this is a little gentle reminder of how you can still also have forgiveness for others and allow them to make their mistakes. And, you know, if someone's hurt you and you, don't, you no longer want them in your life, you just throw them forgiveness and move along. But if they've hurt you and you need to tell them, then tell them. You know, I'm not the most confrontational person. I hate the word confrontation because it already sounds kind of aggressive. But I'm that person that doesn't really, and that's something I need to work on. That if someone hurts my feelings, I don't really normally say it. I've gotten better at it. But you know what? For all of us, I think it's a learning tool. But even if we feel that we can't say something and we don't feel like we want to tell that person, let's at least do the work for ourselves to forgive and let it go and let bygones be bygones. So when we see that person, if we're still going to have a friendship with them or a relationship with them in whatever way, work, personal, what have you, that you don't feel that anger. So that's another good way to do forgiveness. So if someone's hurt your feelings, it's a really close friend, but you really don't know how to tell them because it's like, mm, it's kind of not intentional. You know, it's not intentional. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to give them lots of love and light right now and just forgive them. And even the people you feel like did hurt you intentionally, forgive them. Because remember, they're not being hurt by the fact that you're mad at them. They're not. It doesn't affect their lives. It doesn't, but it affects yours because it's taking away from your energy and their life force. And that energy and life force that you're putting out on crappy energy for, towards them can be used for wonderful things in your life. So forgiveness. And then lastly, at the end, I do believe good gets always outwins the bad and the step monster got her demise. We don't know how she died, but she died. Maybe the husband killed her. <laughs> and the witch got it too. Here the witch thought she was so damn smart and her evil self. And guess what? The little kitties rose up and pushed her, killed her, and she is gone. And so I do want to reinforce that even though sometimes we may feel like we are beaten, beaten down, and that, why, Rosie, it seems like the good guy always finishes last. They do not. When you can put your head on your pillow at night, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and sleep with a clear conscience, you've already won. You've already won a good night's sleep. And each day you wake up, you know you're a good person. Continue to feed all the good in you and continue to see the good in yourself and in others. But of course, always discern the right situations and people for yourself. Because once again, we don't want to be naive, right? With age and with experience, like the two kids, their parents dropped them in the forest. Hansel, you know, put the, the, the thingies, the, the pebbles, and then the mother locked the door. Then he did the bread. He got smarter and smarter each time. He didn't let anything. They didn't let anything break their stride. Nobody gonna break my stride. They still kept going. Obstacle after obstacle. So my friends, do not be deterred or downhearted from any obstacles that you are facing, especially now. Keep the faith, trust in yourself, keep the good flowing throughout yourself, mind, body, spirit. Keep feeding yourself mind, body, spirit, good things, and trust in yourself and love yourself. And right now, have so much compassion and love and light for you so you can give that to others. Because whatever you give in yourself, you just recycle to give to others. So the more love and light and peace and joy you give yourself, that's what you emanate. And that's what we want to do. We want to make this world a lighter, brighter, more beautiful world. And if we can each do that for ourselves first, that's how it becomes contagious and infectious. And that's what we want it to be. So let's do that now, okay? So hoping you have a blessed day. Sending you tons of light and love and magic. And knowing right here, right now, 
that you are worthy, you are enough, and you are loved. And I was getting emotional until we read again. Yes, we'll read again and again and again until I read no longer. Nah, but I don't know how long that's going to be. Thank you. Bye.